Welcome back, everybody, to Pop Culture Conspiracy. I'm your host, T. How are y'all doing today? And in this video, I am back by subscriber request to do a full-length video over Sexy Red's new lip gloss line, Northside Princess. And as I was doing research and just seeing some of the, you know, news online, I also saw that she's canceling tour dates as we speak. So I wanted to tie all of this in in one go. So before I hop in, please like, share, and subscribe. Let's talk in the comments and please turn on your notifications. Okay, y'all. So I remember in the short that I posted yesterday, I told you guys that Sexy Red is an agent. I've been saying that for the longest. I think a lot of people know that she is. Um, they at least use the term plant or industry plant because it's so obvious what's going on and it's, it's so obvious that her success isn't authentic. And it's a bit strange how of all artists, she is getting this massive push, you know, millions worth of marketing dollars. A Drake co-sign that just doesn't make any sense. So I think they're making it blatantly obvious that Sexy Red is a psyop. She's an agenda all within herself. And the industry and the powers that be want her to be famous for a reason. Now, a few months back, I did a video about Sexy Red and Blueface because I had realized that Blueface is also, him and Krishan are also, again, psyops to push an agenda. They just represent the Blue Lodge and Sexy Red represents the Red Lodge. Now, this is really important because again, we're in, we're in an election year. And what happens every election year? There's blue versus red. So this is all again, rituals and Freemasonic programming. The, um, the lip glosses are irrelevant. It's not about them selling. They know people aren't really gonna buy. I know um, some people think that like gays are gonna buy them because of the kind of lifestyle that they lead, and that that may be true, but I don't think they're gonna sell well at all. I think this is maybe part of a money laundering scheme to try to, you know, you know how the industry, the whole thing is a big front for laundering and trafficking, but um, it's all about an agenda. They don't give a fuck if they sell one lip gloss or a million of them. It's not about selling lip gloss. It's about pushing a narrative, pushing an agenda that makes black women look bad. Because as I stated in the short, black women are going to college. We're starting businesses. We are leveling up. We are breaking the chains, breaking the stereotypes, changing the narrative about us. There are many of us who are working against the few of us's efforts. And y'all get on my nerves. Those of you who think pajamas and bonnets in public are okay, I'm talking about you. But there are so many of us who, again, are working very hard to combat stereotypes that have been in place for centuries that are all, again, you know, stereotypes have a negative connotation. We don't have the stereotype that Asians have of being like hardcore studiers and being nerds. We have a stereotype of being promiscuous, ratchet, loud, bad attitude, ghetto, all of this other stuff. And, you know, Sexy Red is here to combat all of the progress that many of us are making on a daily basis. Now, I tied this in with the film, They Clone Tyrone, and I'm also going to tie this in with the boule because that's kind of what the film, They Clone Tyrone, was talking about. They didn't really mention the boule, but I'm going to just tie this all in for you. So just, just roll with me here. In the film, They Clone Tyrone, it was revealed that it was a black doctor who was responsible for... Um, turning black people white. It was like a whole eugenics movement, which is what's going on right now. You know, it's not a black doctor doing it, but it is a black man or it is many black men who work very hard to turn black people white or to turn black people into mixed people, non-black people. You know, again, through eugenics and through race mixing and through DNA. 
We know this. The way that um, and the rate that black men date out and breed out is on purpose because many black men don't want to be black, don't like being black. They don't like the, uh, the narrative around the black community. So they actively work to erase black people. In that film as well, they were speaking about how, oh, again, the whole clone theory was because black people are in like a matrix. We're stuck in a matrix. We're stuck in a program. We're stuck in a mindset where we, again, where we just repeat the same things over and over again. In the film, it kind of had like a Groundhog Day beginning where again there's a drug dealer named Fontaine and he just lives the same day in and out in and out in and out day in and day out he lives the same life he goes to the same places he talks to the same people um he runs into the same ops you know um the pimp named Slickback you know Jamie Foxx's character he was again a clone the only person who wasn't a clone was um, the, the black woman in the film, I forgot her name, but she was the only one who wasn't cloned. So peep game on that because what? Black women are leveling up. We are rising. Whereas black men continue to, again, be involved in crime. All of this drill music and ops and sliding and you know what I mean? These ski masks. That's, you see, you see black men a part of that. And I'm not here to, to feed into a gender and a race war. I want to make that clear, but I'm also here to have a real conversation about what's going on in our community. And if that makes you upset, you know why that makes you upset. So I'm not saying that black women are not um, partaking in a lot of these stereotypical low vibrational behaviors themselves. Many of us are. But there are more of us who are, again, going to be nurses, going to nursing school, again, starting businesses, getting real estate licenses, you name it. You name it. There are many of us, again, who have like broken out of that matrix. And there are more black men who are still trapped in it. And Sexy Red, when I looked her up, she was put on by this black executive named Larry Jackson. And Larry Jackson is responsible for a lot of famous people. He's worked with Nikki and Drake. Hence them giving uh, Sexy Red a feature early on in her career because they probably owed Larry Jackson a favor. Larry Jackson, I'm sure, is affiliated with the Boule. The Boule is the Black Illuminati. They are a branch of the Illuminati, but they have a, it's Black people who have a special interest in keeping other Black people stagnant. And that's what I'm talking about when I say again in the film, they clone Tyrone, there's a black doctor behind the eugenics movement. You know what I mean? There, there, there's a black person in place. You think that it's all just the white man, but that's what they want you to believe. It's really your own people working against you for their own benefit. They're getting a check. Sexy Red is getting a check to promote all of this degeneracy to black girls. You know, and I, I th again, I think she has some boule ties. And all that is, is just black Illuminati. And, you know, no matter how you want to swing that, it's still Illuminati. It's still, you know, there's, there's, there's a black guy behind her. And behind that black guy is a Uish guy who's like getting a big check off of it all. You know, and isn't Drake Uish? See what I'm saying? And the guy behind Drake is Uish. So it's a lot of, again, black and ooze who work together to set the stage for the characters to dance and play on and read scripts off of. I, I just want to point that out here. So um, let's get into her concert sales and ticket sales. You guys, I want to mention that because it just shows that her rise and her fame is not authentic. She really doesn't have a solid fan base. Now, I agree that she's much too early in her career to be trying to sell out arenas. Um, I think that they're reaching with that one, but Sexy Red, they, they were hoping that black people ate it up. They, we were, they were hoping that we really indulged in this bullshit, but we're becoming awake. We're waking up to it, and that's why it's not selling, and I'm not surprised that it's not selling. Again, Sexy Red is manufactured. 
her success, her promotion. It's all manufactured. It's not real. Half of the headlines, again, that come out about her are manufactured. They have blogs on payroll. Media is a machine that works when you put money in the machine. You know, all of this press and promo, it's not real. I've always said, I think Sexy Red was born into this. The amount of red that she's promoted her whole life, when you go back and look at other photos of her from earlier on in high school and stuff like that, and, you know, I've seen her mom with a blonde wig on, I said, hmm, she probably was born into this. And Sexy Red is not who you think she is. She may not be a CIA agent, but she is not your average hood chick from St. Louis. Don't believe that she grew up broke or poor. Don't believe that. Don't believe that. Sexy Red is deeply tied in. Average people from the hood don't get all of this press and promo. And that applies to Ice Spice too. So... Guys, there's a big difference in the way that Sexy Red is being promoted and Lotto was being promoted. Lotto was a white passing woman from Atlanta. Is she getting promo? Yes. But they have a special agenda for Sexy Red. So just understand that. And she gets, in my opinion, more press and promo. You know, her and Ice Spice are chosen. They are chosen. So just never, never look past that. Always understand that, again, everything about her is a front. She's not who you think she is. This is all an act. I think some of the tattoos are fake. I don't believe anything about this girl. I just don't because she's an agent and she's here to do a job. And when this job is over, she'll pick up another job doing something else. But right now, they want to push her as an artist to push narratives and agendas to black people, especially women, because the women are, you know, soaring and taking off and they need somebody to try to combat that. And that's how I know Sexy Red is boule because she's getting a big check to work against her own people. Let's talk in the comments. What do you guys think? Think I'm reaching or you think I'm on to something? Talk to y'all in the next one. Bye.